Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at partial fraction decomposition with distinct and repeated linear factors. So one thing that I want to look at here is this vocab just in the title. So a linear factor, first and foremost, is a factor where the degree of the factor is only 1. x plus 2, x minus 3, x plus 5. Those are all examples of linear factors. Distinct linear factors means 2 or 3 or 4, how many ever, different linear factors. So maybe x minus 2 and x plus 1 or x plus 3 and x minus 5, etc. That would be distinct linear factors. Repeated linear factors are when you have a linear factor that occurs 2, 3, 4 times depending on what the exponent may be. Maybe x plus 1 squared or just x squared or x minus 2 squared, etc. So that's just some vocab that you need to be aware of going into this topic. So the first thing that we're going to look at is just find the sum of the fractions in simplest form. I'm going to add these two fractions together. And you're going to see why when I get to the end of this example. So when I have two fractions, in this case 2 over x minus 2 and 3 over x plus 1, when I want to add these together, I need to find a common denominator. So the common denominator that I would use here is x minus 2 x plus 1. In order to get this fraction to have this denominator, I would need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1 over x plus 1. When I do that, my numerator becomes 2 times parentheses x plus 1. In this second term, to get the denominator to be x minus 2 x plus 1, I'm missing the x minus 2. So I'd multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. So now this numerator would be plus 3 times x minus 2. And you can see that now that these have a common denominator, I can write them as one fraction. So if I simplify this numerator, I end up with 2x plus 2 plus 3x minus 6. The denominator stays. I combine like terms and I end up with 5x minus 4 over x minus 2 x plus 1. So for today's topic, partial fraction decomposition, what's going to happen is I'm going to be given something like this, a rational expression, and I'm going to be asked to start here and get to this. So I'm going to decompose or take one fraction and split it up into a sum of two fractions. Let's look at an example. Given 5x minus 4 over x squared minus x minus 2, decompose the expression as the sum of two fractions. The first thing I'm always going to do in these types of problems is factor the denominator so I know what kinds of factors there are. So when I factor this denominator, I have x minus 2, x plus 1. This is an example of two distinct linear factors. These are both linear factors because their degree is x to the first, x to the first, that's a highest exponent attached to a variable, and they're distinct because they're two different factors. So if I wanted to split this up into a sum of fractions, I would need something over x minus 2 plus something over x plus 1. I have to split up those two factors. My goal in these types of problems is going to be to solve for the numerator in each of these fractions, which since these denominators are linear, I just can put any variable in the numerator. I'm going to call them a and b. So my goal here is to solve for a and b. When solving for a and b, the first thing I'm going to want to do is just completely clear these denominators. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply this entire equation by that common denominator, x minus 2, x plus 1. In this first term, the denominator completely cancels out. I'm left with 5x minus 4. In the second term, the x minus 2s cancel. I'm left with a times x plus 1. In that last term, the x plus 1s cancel, and I'm left with b times x minus 2. I'm left with an equation here that has three unknowns. However, if I plug in any value for x here, this equation should hold true as long as I pick the same value for x. What I need to do is solve for a and b. I could plug in some number for x, create an equation that only has a and b's, plug a number in for x, create another equation that has only a and b's, and then solve that system of equations using either elimination or substitution. But rather than doing that, I'm going to strategically choose values of x in order to get this entire term b or this entire a term to cancel out so that I can then solve for a and b. 
So for example, if I want to get this A term to cancel, I would need to choose X equals negative 1. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let X equal negative 1, and I'm going to plug that into my equation. When I do that, on the left-hand side here, I have negative 5 minus 4, so that's negative 9. In here, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and 0 times A is 0. So this whole term cancels out. Here, I end up with negative 3B. So now I can solve for B. I get B is equal to positive 3. I already have B, so now the next thing that I need to do is solve for A. So again, I'm going to strategically choose a value for X that allows, in this case, the B term to cancel out and only to be left with A. So I'm going to need to choose x is equal to 2. When I let x equals 2, I get 5 times 2 is 10 minus 4 is 6 equals 3a plus 0. So when I solve this equation, I get a is equal to 2. The last thing I need to do in these types of problems is actually plug in for a and b and show this expression that is a sum of two fractions. So my solutions were a is 2, so I have 2 over x minus 2, plus we got b was 3, so 3 over x plus 1. So this expression is equivalent to this expression up here. If you notice the last problem that we did, we actually started here and got this sum. So I know I decomposed this correctly. Let's look at one more example like this where I have two distinct linear factors. Number two, decompose the given expression into the sum of two fractions. I first start by rewriting the expression they gave me and factoring the denominator. However, this denominator is already factored, so I only have x minus 4 and x plus 2. I have two distinct linear factors here, two different linear factors. So I'm going to set up a sum of two fractions where I have something over x minus 4 and something over x plus 2. My goal here is to solve for those two somethings, which I'm going to give variable names of a and b. I'm now going to clear the denominators by multiplying by the common denominator of x minus 4, x plus 2. In this first term, the entire denominator cancels out. I'm left with 2x plus 3. In the second term, the x minus 4s cancel. I'm left with a times x plus 2. And in that last term, the x plus 2s cancel. I'm left with b times x minus 4. Now my goal is to solve for a and b by plugging in values of x. Again, I'm going to strategically choose these x values so that one of these factors cancels out so that I can solve for the other variable. So I'll first choose x is equal to negative 2. And when I plug x equals negative 2 in, I get negative 4 plus 3. So that's negative 1. a times 0 is 0. And then that's going to be equal to negative 6b. So I end up with b is equal to 1 over 6. Next, I'm going to choose an x value that's going to get this b term to cancel out. So I'm going to choose x equals 4 so that I have 0b in that second term. So if I let x equal to 4, I end up with 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. That's equal to 6a. So a is equal to 11 over 6. So now I have my two values. I have my A value. I have my B value. I need to just plug those in to express this fraction as a sum of two fractions. So my final answer here will be A is 11 over 6. So I'm going to write this as 11 over 6 times x minus 4 plus B is 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 times x plus 2. There is my decomposition. Number three is a little bit different than numbers one and two. So when I look at this denominator here, yes, it's factored, but I have one over x times x plus one squared. This is an example of a repeated linear factor. This denominator really says x times x plus 1 times x plus 1. That x plus 1 is there twice. So since this denominator is really three factors, when I decompose this expression, I will have a sum of three terms. So I'm going to set up three fractions here. My first denominator is this first factor. My second denominator is x plus 1 the linear factor that appears there. But since this linear factor appears twice, I need to account for it twice. But when I write it that second time, I actually write this as x plus 1 squared. So now I have three fractions here, something over x, 
something over x plus 1, and then something over x plus 1 squared. My goal now is to solve for these three numerators, which I'm going to call a, b, and c. Since these are linear denominators, these numerators just have a, b's, and c's. From here, I'm going to clear the denominators just like I did in the first two examples. So I'm going to multiply by x times x plus 1 squared. In this first term, the entire denominator cancels. I'm left with 1. In the second term, the x cancels. I'm left with a times x plus 1 squared. In that second term, 1 x plus 1 cancels. So I'm left with x and x plus 1. And in that last term, the x plus 1s cancel, so I'm left with cx. From here, I'm going to do what I did before and choose values of x to get the terms to cancel out. So the first value I'm going to choose is x is equal to 0. When I plug in x is equal to 0, I'm going to get 1 squared times a, so that's just a. Here, b times 0 is 0. That whole middle term will cancel. And then c times 0 is also 0. So right away, I've solved for a. Next, I'm going to let x equal negative 1. When I plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so this term will knock out. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so this term will knock out. And I'm left with c times negative 1, which means c is equal to negative 1. Now, I've already chosen both numbers that will make the x values disappear or kind of just like be a 0 and go away. So what I have to choose now is really any x value at all, and then I'll be able to plug in these a and c values that I already found to help me find b. You can choose any x value you want, but since we don't have calculators, I'm going to choose an x value that's easy to work with. So I'm going to let x equal 1. When I plug in x equals 1, I end up with 1 plus 1, so that's 2 squared is 4, so I have 4a. 1 plus 1 is 2, times 1 is 2, so plus 2b. And then c times 1 is just plus c. From here, I know from my previous steps that a is equal to 1, b is what I'm solving for at this point, and c is negative 1. So now I have 1 is equal to 3 plus 2b, negative 2 is equal to 2b, and finally b is equal to negative 1. My last step here is to just write out this expression. So we found a was 1, so I have 1 over x. B was negative 1, so I can write this as minus 1 over x plus 1. And C was negative 1, so I can write that as minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. There is my decomposition of this expression. That's it for decomposition of partial fractions using distinct and repeated linear factors. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.